Here's my lecture presentation on chapters 39, 40, and 41. Chapter 39 is networking, 40 is asynchronous networking, and 41 is, is using the URL session. So starting with chapter 39, uh, the four main topics we're going to discuss is querying the iTunes web service, uh, sending an HTTP request, and then we're going to um, make a request for JSON data and we're going to parse that JSON data, turn it into something that we can use in Swift in our application, and we're going to sort those search results so that we can um, present them as well as search by subcategories. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm starting off with a uh, application that's completed after chapter 38. So one of the first things that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up my git repo and I'm going to do a git status and you can see that I'm on the master branch and everything is clean. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a branch uh, for chapter 39. Um, that way, if I get lost, I can always go back to the uh, main branch. So um, I'm going to check out chapter 39. So now I should be on um, branch chapter 39. And then we'll, we'll go ahead and um, tag and commit as the book suggests. So <clears throat> as I said earlier, I'm starting off with a um, completed or a uh, an application that runs uh, post chapter 38. So I will run the simulation. Um, I will change from my 11 Pro Max to my iPhone 8, which is what the book has been uh, suggesting. So I'll run the application to demonstrate that the build succeeds as well as it runs without crashing. So I'll give it just a second here for the simulator to come up. Okay, so here's our application, iPhone 8. So I'm just gonna search for the band, the killers. And so you can see I do get the fake results here. So I will stop that and then I will resume with where the um, book takes us. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to send an HTTP request to the iTunes um, web service. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to search to, I'm going to switch to search view controller and I'm gonna add a helper method. So my class is here, so I'm gonna add my helper method here. And so I added my helper method to search the iTunes um, web service. And you can see here is my HTTPS request. And when I request this, this is going to be the search text that I'm going to pass to this um, web service request. So then I'm going to modify my search bar, search button clicked. And so I'm going to go up here and look for my search bar, search button clicked. And here you can see it highlights where my method is, or my function. And I'm going to just um, replace the data here. So make sure, okay, I've got my um, close of my function, um, close of my extension. So I've got two functions in, in this extension. I've got the uh, UI search bar, um, or the search bar button clicked UI search bar, and I've got my positioning function. 
So now what I want to do is I want to run the program and one of the things I want to demonstrate is that the app crashes whenever I put in a name with space to our search bar search button clicked so I want to demonstrate now that if you use a single word like the um, book suggests if I search for Metallica uh, everything's cool if um, I search for a two word the app crashes so the way that we're going to fix that is we're going to um, change our um, iTunes uh, URL function so now we should be able to search for a Let's see, it looks like I got the function and let's see, I think I'm missing a, okay, that should be good now. Okay, so now I'm going to demonstrate that I can search for a, for a um, Word with a space in it. So I search for Metallica, still good. Search for the killers. Okay, so now we're good. So we fixed that. So now what we, uh, we want to do is we want to move on to uh, performing a search request. So I'm going to go back to my search view controller.swift and I'm going to add a new method. Um, so now I'm going to add a method to perform the uh, store request okay so now um we have a valid url url objects object and now we want to do something with it so i'm going to um, take that url string and i'm going to um, save the contents of that in this data format the uh, utf8 so then i want to also add to my search bar search button clicked method I want to um, perform a store of that data that I, that's returned from that URL request so I'm going to add to this function here should be indented but we'll make sure okay so now we're good so now this uh, will invoke the uh, perform star request function and we'll run our app again to make sure everything's working right. And again, we'll perform our search for the killers. And now you can see below in the command line that we searched for the killers and now we're getting back our JSON data. Oh, I forget what you call that. Anyway, so then inside of results is a bunch of dictionaries of individual things like or uh, a bunch of arrays of individual things like the kind here is a song Here's the artist ID, um, the artist name, the killers. Um, here, collection name in this case is the album Hot Fuss. So you can see that it returned a whole bunch of things. And um, there is a maximum number of items that can be returned, and that number is 200. As we'll see um, later as we move down um, into our application. So now we're going we're gonna to talk about parsing JSON. So now all of this data that we returned here that we've collected is JSON data. It's just a collection of strings that's formatted in um, dictionaries and arrays of stuff. So um, one of the things that we want to do is we want to prepare our data for um, JSON parsing. 
So I'm going to go back to Search View Controller, and we're going to just pretty it up. So we have two classes here. Um, we have a result array, and we have a search result. Um, as you can see here, we have a result, and we have a search result. It's all this stuff here. And both of those are using or are identified as codable. We've used codable a few times. Now we're going to go back to our, our search view controller, and we're going to modify our perform um, story quest so that we can change this to data from. Uh, let's see, let's find our perform store request. So here's our, so we're going to change from a string to a data object. So we're going to replace string here with data. And we're going to replace um, we're going to replace this, um, we're going to remove this formatting, this encoding, this UTF-8. We don't need that anymore since we're um, returning a um, data object. And we also have to change this string to a data object, okay? So we should be good. So we change that request method to fetch the response from the um, server as a data object as opposed to a string so that now our JSON data can be put into the proper format. So now we're going to add another function to the search view controller. And here's the end of our function here. So we're just going to add this here and I'm going to make a web service request. We're asking for something from the iTunes web service and we're getting back a string of data. So the first thing that we did was we, we got a, a string that would represent that JSON format, which is the dictionaries, um, an arrays of dictionaries. So now what we're doing is we're using the built-in JSON capabilities of Swift to now bring that beta data back and actually have it in some format as opposed to just a big old string. So that's what our parse data function is going to do now. Um, we're going to use this JSON decoder. So we all, we, now we have to modify our search bar, search button clicked method. And um, <clears throat> replace that print statement with these two lines. And get rid of that line. So <clears throat> now what we have is we're going to parse that data and we're going to put it into a results variable. And then we'll print out to our console here that we got the results along with that data that we just grabbed. So. Now what we'll do is we'll demonstrate, we'll run the app again. And you'll see that the format has changed or actually you'll see what's changed. So now we run our application and now what we get is our store search results. But now it's in the form of an object, a data object. So now we have to do something with that data. Um, but it's not just a bunch of string data now. So the parser is starting to um, put that data into a format that we can use within our application. Okay, so now we um, we we want to print those uh, the contents of that object. So we're going to modify our search results. Um, here, and the first thing that we're going to do in the um, search result is we're going to, so we have um, codable identified. Now we're going to identify our custom string, oops, str 
stream convertible, which is that one here. Okay. And then um, we're going to uh, add our description. It's a string. Oops. And we're going to return. Um, the name. So remember the backslash in parentheses, we're returning the variable name in that position. And then we'll return the artist name. And artist name. Okay, so now something that you wanna notice here is the double question mark. So the double question mark, uh, it's called the, the nil coalescing operator. So um, we did see this before, the nil coalescing operator, it unwraps the variable to the left of the operator, which is artist name. And if it has a value, it will return the value if, if not, um, it returns the value to the right of the operator. So <clears throat> if artist name exists, we'll return the artist name value. If it doesn't exist, then we're going to return none. That's what the double question mark means in this case. So now we're going to run the app again. Remember down here, we see that um, this was what was returned prior to the change that we just made. We'll run it again. And now you'll see that we'll return the artist's name, or we'll return the name and the artist's name. So now what we return is, so this is this name, Mr. Brightside is the name of the song, and the artist is the killer name artist name okay so now what we probably need to consider is some error handling so one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to uh, create a function to show the network error if there is a network error so there's my last matching and then i'm going to pretty it up okay so now we have a, a method called show network error um, so if we have an issue with accessing the iTunes web service, um, we're going to print out a message that says um, there's an error when you're trying to access um, the iTunes store and ask you to try again and then give you a, uh, the ability to acknowledge that error. So um, in perform store request, here, we're going to um, add the uh, show network error. So here we've determined that there is an error, correct, on the, in the try in the do catch. So we have our or our try catch. Sorry, here's our try. Here's our catch. So in the catch, we're going to make a call to show network error, which is here. Okay. And what we're going to do to simulate an issue with the search is we're going to find our URL that we're searching for, which is um, iTunes URL search. And we're going to, um, so we're going to add, instead of searching, we're going to search, we're going to um, add a no, no more to the, um, iTunes URL. So here I'm just going to add a no more so that this now no longer exists and that will help us to simulate a, um, a network error. So um, 
what I'll do is I'll rebuild this. Our app comes up normal. I'm gonna search for the same thing we've been searching for, which is the killers. And uh oh, something happened. So we get this message, whoops, uh, there's an error accessing the iTunes store. Please try again, gives us this little button or this okay to acknowledge that. So um, two things, one is we catch the fact that there was an error and then we make a call to show network error to um, display that message. So we'll go back and we'll remove the no more and we'll run it again, make sure it's still working. So now we'll bring up the killers and our app is still working. So that's good. Okay, so now we gotta think about working with our JSON results. Um, so now we've got the data in a data object format so that we can access its. So um, what we'll do now is we're going to um, add a property to search result. We're going to add it to search result here. Um, I guess we can do it down here where the others are. So, so we're going to add kind, kind is a string. It's an empty string. Okay. Um, then we're going to modify the return um, for the uh, description. Oops. Okay. I'm going to pretty it up. Okay. Okay. So now what we did was we replaced our return statement with kind, and here you see the double question mark again. If kind exists, then we're going to uh, return kind. Otherwise, we're going to return none. We're going to return the name of the song in the case of the music, and then artist name again. Um, we have the double question marks. We'll return the artist name if it exists, if it, if it is returned. But otherwise, we'll return none. And then you'll notice here that we added a variable kind. And here's our old friend, the question mark. And this prevents, um, we have to, it, it uh, forces us to unwrap the variable kind if, if, uh, if kind for some reason is null. Um, we won't have a, uh, an exception returned. So, Let's see. So now we'll, we'll run the app again. And we're gonna look at the um, output again. So we do our killers again. Now you see that we get a little bit different information. So now we have kind, it's a song. And then we have our same name and artist here. So um, we've added one more parameter, one more attribute, one more property kind. Now, one thing you will notice that down here is we have a feature movie now. So not just songs, but something else besides a song. And you'll notice that the name is The Killers 1946, which is not really our artist that I was looking for in music, but Robert uh, Siermak. So um, now we're gonna add more properties to our search. Um, I keep doing that. I wanna go to search result. Okay. So what we have here is we've added um, currency, artwork, actually we've added track price, currency, artwork. Now, this 60 in the artwork for the URL is a 60 by 60 
thumbnail. This signifies a hundred by a hundred thumbnail. So this, these variables are going, to, are going to hold those two different sizes of images. Um, okay. So again, this isn't everything, but it's more than what we had. Um, so here we're going to demonstrate, I guess, what I was, I was just talking about these two variables, the uh, 60 by 60, the 100 by 100. We're going to replace those with names that we probably would, uh, or would make more sense. So we're going to replace this, this, um, track view, primary genre. We're going to replace those names with something a little bit more meaningful. And I'll show you what I mean here. So I, I added this enumerated type. Um, I want to get that last closing brace. Okay, so we have a coding keys enumerated type. When we, when we get the string um, returned to us, uh, we want to replace artwork URL 160 with the small image, the 100 with the large image, our track view URL with the store URL, primary genre name of just genre. Those names are a little bit more meaningful to us. And this is just a demonstration on how you can change what is provided to you in the web service with what, what's more meaningful to you in, in your uh, code base. So um, using those results, we go back to our um, search view controller and we want to go, we want to uh, modify our search bar, search button click method, and that's here for our function. Um, so what we want to do is we want to change um, so we want to change our, our these two lines so we want to change our results um, return from the parse function and the print statement with just the single line um, with the function that we created um, called search results. And the parameters that we, um, oops, sorry about that. I said that wrong. So what we're doing is we had our print statement and we had our variable with the um, let statement, but we're, now we're going to change those two lines to store the parsed data in our search results variable. Or I keep forgetting what they call it. Okay. Okay, so now what we do, and, and all we're doing there is just cleaning up the code a little bit, uh, making it more readable. So let's run it again. Now you'll see in our application that we've returned that data and we've sent it to our view controller. So now we have our artist, the killers, Mr. Brightside, the song, and here are a whole list of songs and authors. But we did see in there that there was a I don't see it. It's in there. Oh, here it is. So <clears throat> what I've done, let's see if I can explain this. So what I've done is I've removed those and I've made um, the items track and collection as um, strings, but they have to be unwrapped first. That's what the question mark means because there's a potential that they could be null we don't want to return or use a null value because then that will cause our app to crash forgot to pretty this up okay so then <clears throat> what we have here is 
um, when we see um, our track view URL, um, again, we have our double question mark, which means we're going to return our collection view URL, um, or we're going to return empty strings. Empty strings are different than a null. So if you have a null, that's bad. If you have an empty string, well, it's just empty, but it exists. Okay. So then we also have this genre that is going to determine um, is this, uh, what, what kind of genre is this? And it's going to return now. Um, we also see this joined statement. It's going to join with a separator of comets. It's, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's the token that it's looking for in the value returned from the web service. So um, just go over, let's see, well, we're, we lost it, but um, let's run the app again. And we're going to search for the killers again. So now what we did was we're just prepping this JSON data to do some things with it that we want to do, which in, in particular is um, we're really prepping for being able to search, search by artists or, or music, by ebook. Um, so that's really what we're doing when we add this capability here is we're giving ourselves some flexibility to, to separate that data and to be a little bit more precise with our search. Okay, so now um, what we want to do is we want to go, we want to go uh, see what kind of data this or uh, kind of separate the kind of data that we're looking for. So what we want to do is we want to go back to search results here and we want to add um, a few computer properties. So we'll add them here at the end. Okay. So now we have our kind value is in the audiobook artist name. So in this case, we're handling that kind as an audiobook if we find that string in our return from our web service request. Then we go back to our search view controller and we're going to change this line with that whole thing. Okay, so now what we've done is we've, um, then we'll fill that with, with unknown. Okay. So, Now what we want to do is we want to replace the uh, computer type in our um, search results. Let's go back to search results. And now what we want to do is we want to add a, we, we want to add all the different types of, we're going to replace this with all of that that I just copied. Okay, so now we have a switch case statement. So when we get in the, um, the string, we're going to look at kind, and we're going to say, is that an album? Is it an audiobook? A book, an ebook, a feature movie, a music video, podcast, software, etc. Doing there. Um, so if you'll notice, we do have to account for every case. So if we, threw, we go through all these cases and we don't find what we're looking for, 
we have a default statement that says break, but what we return is unknown. So if we don't, if, if anything that we receive is, does not fall under any of these items, then we're still going to return something. We're going to return unknown. We're going to say, for kind, the web service didn't provide any information, so we don't know what that is. But we're still going to return something. So um, now what we'll do is we'll run the app again, now that we've added all of that functionality to handle the various different things. We'll search for The Killers, which is a musical group. And you'll notice that song, song, those are all songs. But now let's search for a book author, Stephen King. So now you'll see in searching for Stephen King, we have an audiobook, we have a movie. Um, I'm not sure what else Stephen King would return. But anyway, you see something more than just Uh, music. So now let's go through and let's talk about sorting our results. So we've got a bunch of results. Now we want to probably sort them alphabetically, ascending, descending order. So um, we're going to add some code to help us sort that. So we're going to add a, um, so when we parse the data here, we're going to add the ability to sort those results. Okay. So what this is going to do is it's going to take two results, it's going to look at them and compare them decide which one's greater than the other, and then it's just going to sort in an ascending manner. So basically alphabetize from A to Z. So <clears throat> I don't know if, let's see, maybe our app is still up. Mm. So if you noticed, before we did that, let's just go back to the killers. And we have M for Mr. Brightside, S, A, W. So now when we run this with the sorting, you'll see that the same search for the killers is going to re return things in order. A Dustland Fairy Tale, a White Demon, B Still, Believe Me. So you can see that it sorted our results, which is what we were looking for. So that's great, but we have a, a better way to sort um, for readability. So we want to change our. Yep, got to go from here. And what we have now is. We have these special um, variables $0 and $1. That represents the first value and the second value. And we have this localized standard compare. So we're comparing the name from the first item with the name from the second item. And again, we're going to sort ascending. So we can run that again. Verify that it still does the same thing as it did before, which we'll keep using the killers. And you can see we still, we get the same results with it with the end. So we're going to go to search result, and we're going to add a function to provide um, some operator overloading. So what we want to do is go. We're going to go beyond the scope of the class. So here we're going to go outside of. Um, sorry, this is the class here.
So here we're going to overload this operator, the less than operator. So now we've added the function uh, to overload that operator. Um, so we're going to go back into our search view controller and in here instead of our search results and our sort having all this stuff which we just took out we're going to use our newly created operator um, so we're going to use our dollar zero which is our first parameter and we're going to compare it to dollar one but you'll notice that now we're doing the comparison with this operator that we've just overloaded so now we want to go um, and and we can demonstrate that this still works and it's still going to sort ascending just like before oh <laughs> I forgot to replace the braces with parentheses. Oops. Okay. So now it recognizes. So now we replaced uh, the code twice to sort. And we can demonstrate that with this new code, build it again. And voila, still um, sorts it by ascending. So that concludes chapter 39. I'll bring up my little, uh, I lost it. Um, but um, that concludes chapter 39. So now we'll move on to chapter 40. Um, so what we've been doing so far is uh, synchronous network re requests, which means that when we request a service from, or, or we uh, create an HTTP request from a web service, we have to wait until that web service comes back before we can do anything else. So our UI is frozen until that uh, call is returned. So what we're going to demonstrate now is something called asynchronous networking, which will use something called threads. And there's some built-in functionality within Swift to handle the uh, asynchronous calls. So we can make a request to the web service and we can go on doing other things in our UI so uh, it doesn't appear to the user that um, we're stuck, we're just sitting there waiting. Uh, although the request itself could be stuck, but we don't know that because we're going to make that call asynchronously so that we can continue on with other things. Um, it doesn't make for a good app whenever you make a request or you access some functionality that just freezes your screen. You get impatient, you turn your phone off, you start killing things when um, it could be just a, a, um, a bit of a wait on the return from the request. Okay, so um, we're going to change, remember I, I had said this earlier, We. Uh, the default number of returned items is 50 on our web service request to the iTunes um, store. So now we're going to explicitly change that to allow us to return 200 items. So what we're going to do is we're going to add to this HTTPS request, we're going to add um, a limit of 200. And that is a hard limit. We can't request any more than 200. But this ampersand here, um, it separates parameters from this search. So um, that was just a demonstration of, of um, separating this URL. Um, so. So now what we'll do is we'll demonstrate, we'll run the app, make sure we didn't break it. We changed the limit from the default of 50 to 200. So you can see it's a little bit longer. It's going to return a little bit more um, than 50, which is why you noticed it took 
a tad bit longer. Not a bunch, but a little bit. So um, now what we want to do is we want to simulate some network conditions. So I've connected my phone and then up here in the simulators, um, I will choose my phone. Devices and simulators. And then devices tab. And then uh, I'm going to choose my my phone here, here, and then under conditions, um, I'm going to choose network link, and then I'm going to choose a very poor network. And then I'll click start. Okay, so this is going to help me simulate poor network conditions on my phone, um, so that we can um, demonstrate some of the issues that we sh that we might see and how we need to handle things like adding an activity indicator that lets the user know I didn't go away, I'm not dead, I'm working, but gives gives some feedback to the user. So um, we're going to create another nib file to this project. Um, we're going to add a file and we're going to choose empty. That's the nib or XIB file. And we're going to name it loading cell. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a table view cell. Not table view, but table view cell. We're going to drag it into our work area. We're going to change the dimensions, 375, and I think it wants 80 here. Okay. And then we're going to set the reuse um, identifier here to loading cell because that's what we want to use. And selection we want to set to none so it's default. But we want it to be none because the user can eventually get the this to accept a gray value. Um, what we really want is for the user not to be able to do anything until we want something, some action performed. That's why we set the selection to none. Okay, so um, then we're going to uh, create a label or move a label in there. so that we can um, send to the user that a message that we're, we are loading. Don't, don't get too crazy. And then we want to create a custom color down here, which is black, and set the opacity to 50%. And we want to make sure that our font is 15, not 17. Um, and then we want to create an activity indicator view. We're going to put it right next to our message. Um, and we want to set the style to gray. And we want the tag to be 100. Oops. OK. So let's see. I 
we need to um, okay so now we've got to control help command to select them both and I want to embed these in uh, view without inset. Okay. Now, um, so this is a new container, and we want to we want to align those and so um, we want to align them horizontally and vertically and those are going to be constraints that we'll add so um, so now we need to look at the label, we need to add constraints to it to fix those red lines that you saw that basically saying that something's wrong. Um, so we're going to pin that label to all four sides. And then we're going to do the same for our activity. We're going to add constraints. Okay, so now everything should be blue. So now our view is blue, our label is blue, and our activity monitor is blue after adding those constraints. Okay. So now we're going to make use of the activity indicator. So we're going to add, um, search, we're going to go back to search view controller and we're going to look for table view cell identifiers. So inside our structure for cell identifiers, we're going to add another um, static let, and we're going to add a variable for loading cell. Okay, and then we need to register that nib, that nib in the uh, view did download. So we need to go find view did download. Um, am I in the wrong place? Ah, okay, well, there it is. So we're going to um, register So that's registering the, um, the nib that we just created. And then we want to add an instance variable. I'm going to add it here. So we're going to add is loading variable. And we're going to initialize it to false. So by default, uh, is loading will have a Boolean value of false. So then we want to change our table view um, number of rows in the, in the section here. So, um, so I think A 
is loading. Okay, so what we added here was um, in our will selection, will select row at, um, if our count is zero or we're loading. So we've made a request to the web service and we, go, we are going to change the is loading um, boolean to true and we return nothing. So now we have to change our search bar, search button clicked, and we have to, um, sorry, I know I'm saying um a lot, I apologize. So we get, we're going to add our is loading. Gonna set that to true here. And we're going to reload our date our we're gonna reload our table view here. And then Is loading be the false? Just before I just just before we reload the data here, we're going to set our is loading boolean back to false. So we set it to true. We reload our table so that it shows our activity. <clears throat> we do our search and we do our sorting. And then after that comes back, then we can say we're no longer loading. We reload the data so that we display our results, but all right, and, our, and uh, remove our activity monitor. So now um, we'll demonstrate. Okay, my phone must have fallen asleep. Okay. lower source app to the limit target. So where was I? So now I'm going to run my app again. Okay, now we're building. So <clears throat> but I think this is where I needed to add my phone. Let me try adding it again. I don't know why it complained about my... Okay. Oops, search bar, search button, click. And we're going to get rid of... Um, Search bar, empty. So we're gonna get rid of everything after the first reload. So we'll just comment that code out. Okay, still good there, still good there. 
Okay. So the reason that we re, uh, we removed all of this is um, that we don't allow the code to come back to activate that activity desktop. Okay, so now so now that we search for the killers, you can see that our activity monitor with our little message shows up, but now we can't get our results. So um, what we need to do is do something called, um, or we need to make this asynchronous so that we can go off, do our search, and our UI isn't stuck there. Okay. So we're going to go back to um, our, search, our search bar, search button method function here. And after our search results here, so we're going to uncomment that code, first of all. And then um, So now we have our sync button and our okay. should be good now. Okay, so um, we created a global queue so that we can dispatch this request this I, this URL request and um, basically we're going to provide a closure to execute this code. So now what we're going to do is if you look at the console we're going to run this okay See our console is empty. We're going to do a search, and when the search, we're going to see our activity monitor. But when the search is completed, we're going to see a done show up in our console. See, it's pretty quick. So that done corresponds to this print statement done here, which um, <clears throat> this request was put inside this asynchronous queue. Okay, so now we're going to um, replace our done statement with a um, so we're going to add our dispatch um, queue for our main thread, and it's an asynchronous dispatch queue. Um, we set our is loading to false and then we reload our table. So now we use we printed done to the console now when we do our search. Now we get our search results back. But this is now an asynchronous call as opposed to a synchronous call. Um, so these Q 
queues, um, they're called GCD queues. They are um, global I can't remember the name. Well, I'll, I'll think of it here in a second. So, something else that we can do, we can okay, let's see So we can also um, check to make sure that the thread that we're running on or executing a particular piece of code, um, we can make sure that it's on the main thread. So um, let's see if it's going to work nice. OK. So there's a way to check, which is just one line of code. I don't know that we actually want to add this, but um, when we do the queue, um, let's see, when we want, when we look at the queue outside the closure to the inside. Okay, so. So we can change this. We can move that to inside the dispatch. Um, actually, I didn't want to put it there. I wanted to put it here. And so then um, that will allow us to make sure that so I'm trying to I'm trying to okay so clicking on the scheme drop down. to edit the scheme and then I'm going to look at the um, debug diagnostics and main thread checker is checked here and then um, if you look in the console this will tell us if we're on the main thread. So I'm going to do a search and you can see the trace from the main thread checker. That was the single line of code that we added inside this here, along with changing that um, parameter to check the main thread. Okay, so that's all for chapter 40. Um, one thing that it really that it wants us to do, which we'll demonstrate here, is um, we will check in the code. So if we look at the um, I guess in my OneDrive. Um, let's see. E five ninety three and Xcode projects and store oops store search Silva. Okay. So here we have our git rep our git repository for this store search implementation. If I do a status 
you'll see that we have several files that have been modified. Um, we've also got a new file that we need to add to the repo. Um, so, and then the book also wants us to tag this version. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and add everything. And I'm going to commit everything. Um, and I'm going to say um, added asynchronous network. Oh, in the spirit. Not supposed to be past tense though. Okay, I'll just leave that for now. And we'll commit that. And if I look at my status, um, everything's up to date. So now we're going to tag this with um, version 0 0.2 so if I do a git tag you can see the two tags so version 0 0.1 was chapter 37 and 38 we tagged it as version 1 and now um, through chapter 40 we are going to um, create a tag for version 2 so um, on to chapter 41, which is the URL session. The URL session is some functionality that handles a lot of the under the hood things when you're doing um, URL requests, like things like um, artwork and ordering things. Um, so the other thing that we're going to do in this chapter is we're going to demonstrate how to create a branch in Git. Um, we're going to show how to handle the canceling of operations. So if you're in the middle of an operation, you're in the middle of requesting something to or making a URL request to a web service and the user cancels it, how do you handle that? Do you allow that initial request to continue on while you create a new request? Next thing you know, you have conditions where you might return undesirable results. And then we're going to search, uh, demonstrate how to search on different categories. Then we're going to um, show how to do download artwork for those results. And then we're going to merge our branch that we create back into the main branch. We're gonna demonstrate that. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to um, branch our code. So here they show a, dem a um, pictorial uh, demonstration of, of what it looks like. So um, from the master branch, we create a new branch, we do some work, we commit that work, and then we merge it back into the main branch. And this is really helpful when you have multiple users working on the same, ba on the same code base. Um, it's even good for you as an individual to be able to create feature branches. So I want to add some capability. I want to add something major. And um, I want to be able to work independently from what I've done on the main branch. And then when I get that feature working uh, the way that I'd like for it to work, then I can merge it back into my main branch. So that's what we're going to demonstrate here is creating a branch. So um, if I do another git status, you'll see that um, I'm already on, on chapter 39. I did that prior to this. So what I, I'm going to do is I'm going to merge, um, I'm going to merge that back into the um, main branch. So what I want to do is I want to get back to my master branch. So I'm going to check out master. So now I'm on the master, then I want to merge uh, chapter 39 back into the main. Okay, so you can see that um, I've merged all the changes that I made back into uh, my main branch. 
So if I look at get status, everything is good. Uh, and so now I'll create another branch called, um, let's just say chapter 41. Okay, then I'm going to um, move. So, so even though I created the branch, if I look at get status, I'm still on the master branch, so I still need to check out chapter 41 branch so that I know I'm now working on branch chapter 41, okay? So I think if I do a git branch, it will show, yeah. So if I do a git branch, I show that I have two branches. I have, of course, my master, then I have chapter 39, and this chapter 41 is highlighted because that's the branch I'm currently on now, and that's the branch I'm making changes to. So the nice thing about Git or any um, source control that I can go back to any one of those points if I feel like I've gone astray with um, my code. So currently we're on uh, chapter 41 branch, and now we're going to work with um, our URL session. And if you'll notice, if you go here, you'll see in, in the uh, source control for Xcode, you'll see that chapter 41 shows here. It's, it's already um, changed to um, the code base being modified on chapter 41. If I look inside my branches, you can see I have my master branch, I have my uh, chapter 39, and now currently I'm working on chapter 41. And you can see all the commits. So you can see here was my here was the in initial commit, and then here are the various commits. Here's my first tag, version one, and now I've tagged this with version two. So going back to my code base, I want to use um, my URL session. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to remove the method perform store request. So I'm going to go to perform store request and I'm going to get rid of that. Now, um, <laughs> I shouldn't be nervous because I'm using git, but I, I'm going to just comment this out for just a minute and that will get rid of my function perform star request. And then I'm going to um, change my search bar search button function. So you see that I've got an error because I just got rid of that function. So, So I'm going to get rid of all that and replace it with that in the book. Um, then I'm going to get rid of these comments. Okay, so um, we're creating a URL object and we're going to use a URL session instance. Uh-oh, what did I do here? Uh, I suspect I have some issues. I think I just need one closing. I should be okay now. <laughs> A little too happy with the cleanup there.
Okay, so I think I think I'm okay now. That closes the function. That's the if search bar. That's the closure. Okay. So and by the way, this is the closure here. So we have three parameters, data, response, and error. So this closure closure is um, executed um, inside of the queue that we created, the asynchronous queue. Okay. So now, after all those changes, let's run our app again. And let's look at, in particular, the console below after we do our search. So if you notice, in our console, we show success, right? Which is this case here. So um, when we create the session with that URL object and the completion handler, um, we check for an error. We report with a print statement, or we or we uh, print success with the response that we get back from the web service, and that's what we got. So we got a whole bunch of stuff back from the web service. Okay, so now um, Now we want to look at handling some of those status codes. So I guess we're all familiar with the um, 404 when we don't, um, when our URL um, is bad or um, the web service no longer exists. So there's more than just the 404, right? There's a whole bunch of things. And um, in the book provides a link to Wikipedia to show you all those uh, HTTP status codes. So Right now, we're going to go um, change the contents of this completion handler. <clears throat> All right. So that goes with that. So it's got to be just that stuff, right? So that goes with that, and that goes with the completion handler. So now moving on, um, so now what we want to do is we want to um, so we, we, we had a success, now we'd like to simulate a failure. So let's go change our iTunes URL. And we're going to change our search to add an LOL. And do our search. Now you see we have a failure. No response because it's not a valid term. Okay. So we get rid of that. And now let's go back to parsing the data. Um, let's go back to our completion handler. The one that I took you guys off on a serious tangent. Um, we're going to ch we're going to uh, replace this uh, success print statement 
with um, the actual data. And let me, so now we've replaced that print statement with um, getting our search results into our data object. And then we're going to search that by our less than operator. Then we're going to dispatch that into an asynchronous queue. Okay. So now we're going to run it again to demonstrate what we've done. <clears throat> Search for the killers, and again, we have successful data alphabetized in ascending order. Okay, so now back to our dispatch queue, I mean our completion handler. Um, Let's see, below our, okay, so, um, we're going to add figure out how to format that queue. So we've added an asynchronous dispatch queue. Um, <clears throat> uh, we've added um, our pass search is loading, our reloading of the data table, and then also the showing of our network error should we get one. Now, this shouldn't fall through, but if it does, Actually, um, okay. We've already added that data here, so provided our is loading, our reload data. But what we also want to do is we want to, um, so we have, we want to add searched false and we're going to uh, check is load or set is loading to false we're going to reload the data and then we're going to call oops we're going to call a show network error okay Okay, so I mean, every time we make a code change, it's oops. So now we're going to deal with um, canceling operations. So a user may make a request, and then in the middle of that request, if it doesn't come back, 
the user will get antsy and make a new request. What do you do with that first request? So we're going to handle that right now. So we're going to go to our search view controller Swift, which is where we're at. We're going to add a new instance variable at the very top here. So we'll add it here. And um, we're going to add this data task. session task and then we're going to look in our search bar search button function and we're going to remove the let from the data task okay see if that helps yes okay so we downloaded the artwork and we um, added a new file a new nib file and this is our nib for um, or I'm sorry we added our new file for the uh, image view and the downloading of the image um, what, what we're doing is we're creating a function called load image we're using our URL object um, returning a URL session download task and we are providing a variable session to hold our shared URL session and then we um, execute our download task which again creates um, our dispatch queue And let's see what else do we, um, so to our search result cell, we are going to add our download task variable. And again, we want to make sure that we unwrap this because we are not sure this possibly could be a null value. Um, we are going to add the artwork image view here and I believe okay and okay let's now let's go on to canceling our previous image um, download. So we talked about this before. So in our search result cell, um, we add a function prepare for reuse. So what we want to do is we want to unwrap our download task and cancel it if we've received another and then we want to set our download task to null. And the reason is we don't want we don't want to have a outstanding request continue on when we've canceled it. We want to ensure that we cancel that and prepare it for reuse. And that is really the conclusion of chapter 41. Um, so what we um, can do is we can merge. So, so we have two um, modified files. So I'm going to add those and I'm going to commit those and I'm going to uh, complete it, com 
complete chapter 41 at the URL session. So remember, I'm in chapter 41, so the book would like for us to merge back into the main branch. So I'm going to go back to the main branch. Now I'm on the master, so now I want to merge chapter 41 with, okay, so now I've merged and I'm back on master. So all of those changes that we added in chapter 41 in our branch chapter 41 have now been merged back into master. So that completes chapter 41. Um, thank you, and that's it for now.